All right, we're on to the second video here, which is translation of our mRNA. I've kind of backed up here to the beginning of this thing just to kind of review a little bit. So we've got transcription and translation. We talked about how this is all about uh, the process of going from DNA to mRNA is transcription, and then mRNA to polypeptide or mRNA to protein is translation. So we're going to talk about that in a second. Just as a reminder, we went through these steps of transcription here. We watched some videos about how this mRNA gets processed, how you splice things out. And then we talked finally about promoters and transcription factors and about how this whole thing, this whole complex kind of sits here and waits for the right ingredients to all come along. So those activators all have to come along. The right transcription factors all have to come along. The promoter has to be in the right place and polymerase has to be waiting. And once all of this bends over and comes together, the, the polymerase will just you know, scoot down the gene and transcribe the gene. So now we're going to move into translation. So again, the, the idea here is our, we're going to focus on this mRNA to polypeptide or mRNA to protein, if you want to call it that. And we have to be reminded that transcription happens back here inside the nucleus. So transcription is occurring back here, and then that mRNA gets processed, right? That poly A tail and that 5G cap. Um, the, the whole thing... Um, is processed to a point where it's ready to leave the nucleus. So once it gets its little poly A tail and 5G cap, then it can leave the nucleus, it can go through a pore, and it can leave the nucleus, and it's gonna to go to a ribosome. There's those things out here called ribosomes. Usually they're on ER, right? But some of them are floating around, free, floating around. Ribosomes, if you recall, ribosomes make proteins. That's what we have to always remember about ribosomes. So we're gonna focus on this process of how does it make a protein? How does it take this mRNA and translate it into a protein. <clears throat> so this is the next little slide that we're gonna look at. So what we have here is a uh, couple of diagrams that help us understand this process. So the first step of translation is called initiation. So like the beginning, right? A couple of things that we need to understand in our diagram here. First of all, this light blue piece here in the background, this, this blob up here and this blob down here, that's the outline of the ribosome itself. <clears throat> so that is the ribosome in the background there. This is our mRNA here. So that's our mRNA right there. And what a ribosome is gonna do is it's gonna hold that mRNA in place and it's gonna read it um, and, and, and shift and read and shift and read. There are a couple of different terms here that we need to become familiar with. There's A, P, and E sites. Um, we're going to label them on here, and I'm hoping that you can take your notes on this as well. There's A, and then the P site here is covered up, but the P site is back here, and then the E site. <clears throat> the A stands for, uh, in, in our terms, we can go with arrival, and then P is processing, and E is eject. So you have the arrival, the processing, and the ejection sites here on the ribosome. And we'll see how that works here in a second. We'll kind of diagram this all out. Another couple of terms here is codons and anticodons. Codons are three-letter sequences found on mRNA, found on the mRNA. So in this case, our first codon is going to be AUG, right here, AUG. That's going to be the first codon that's held in place. And it is complemented by a tRNA. That's what this blue blob is here. This blue blob is tRNA. And it is a type of RNA that transfers an amino acid to the party. So this is the amino acid. And if you recall, amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, right? So it's basically br bringing an amino acid with it. Now on one specific location on that tRNA, there are three RNA letters that are called anticodons and they complement the codons. So if the codon is AUG, like it is here, the anticodon would be A pairs with U and U pairs with A and G pairs with C. So our anticodon is UAC, okay? So we have a codon down here, we have an anticodon that complements, and then on the other side of the tRNA is an amino acid. And I wanted to make note that the amino acids are very specific to the tRNA. So this tRNA in this case is a blue tRNA, it has a UAC as its anticodon, it's bringing this very specific amino acid to the party, okay? So what happens here? <clears throat> the next step that's gonna happen here is it, for initiation, is that another tRNA molecule, and I'll, I'll try to draw this as best I can here, but another tRNA molecule is gonna be out here and it's gonna have an anticode on it for the next codon in the series. 
So remember, this spot here is called the arrival spot, right? Well, that one wants to go into there. And if it has the correct anti-codon, it can fit in there. So let's try to figure out what our next anti-codon would be. Our next codon is GUC. See that? So our anti-codon then would be C A G. And then this, this nucleic acid, or I'm sorry, this RNA, this transfer RNA, is carrying with it a very specific amino acid. All right? And it's going to go into the arrival site. So we can kind of animate this in our head, and we can see that that's what happens over here. That puppy goes into that arrival site. So it goes into that arrival site, so you can see that here. And the anticodon is now complementing the codon. But what has happened here is that as this amino acid, I'll point it out right here, as that amino acid comes into that arrival site, this amino acid right here becomes chemically attracted to it more so than it's chemically attracted to the tRNA. So it no longer wants to bind or bond with the tRNA. So it leaves the tRNA. We can see this little arrow illustrating that idea over here. And it bonds with the new amino acid that just showed up. Now this whole thing is going to shift in this direction. Notice that we're reading from five prime to three prime again. So that's what ribosomes do. They're gonna shift the whole thing. When that shifts, this guy's gonna go here, this guy's going to go here, and then we're going to have an open arrival site. And when this blue one goes here, you're going to see in the next slide, when the blue one goes there, that's our ejection site, right? That's the E site. The blue one is now naked. It lost its amino acid. So it just goes away. It floats away. What's it going to do? You'll see in a while, but it's basically going to go pick up another amino acid, the same one it was just holding on to, you know, just floating around, and then it's going to try to return to the party as long as its anticodon matches up. So the next phase of this is called elongation. So we're just going to build and elongate an amino acid sequence. And then we're going to finally get to termination, which is the end of the sequence. So you can see a new one shows up right here. So we have a new uh, tRNA that shows up with its own amino acid. And again, that one is going to bond with this growing chain here. And then the whole thing is going to shift over by one. And this is going to repeat over and over and over again until we get a long chain of amino acids that's kind of growing out right here. When we get to a specific codon sequence, there are specific codon sequences that will basically tell the whole process stop. And you'll see what that means here in a second. But when it tells the whole thing to stop, it stops. And the whole thing snips off right here. And then this floats three, three, that is a polypeptide. It is made up of many peptide bonds. Remember, that's how you bond amino acids together. So it's a polypeptide. It's many peptide bonds, or it's known as a protein at that point. And it will do the whole thing of folding, that primary, secondary, tertiary, all that folding. And it will do its job. And then the whole thing falls apart. The ribosome falls apart. Let's go to the mRNA. What happens next? The mRNA gets basically breaks down because it doesn't hold together very well. And then those little pieces, those little um, nucleotides of RNA, they go back to the nucleus and then they're reused again. The ribosome just waits for more mRNA to show back up and then it clamps down on another one and it goes. Okay, so let's watch some uh, animations of this just to kind of see what we got here. I did want to show um, that I we wanted to pick up here with transcription one more time and just remind you, you've got your complex here of initiation factors uh, transcription factors, and then we've got our activators up here uh, that are on the enhancer. And remember, this thing bends, and as soon as these all come together, it springs the trap, and there goes polymerase down the down the strand. So here goes polymerase. This is transcription still. Remember, this is transcription now. Again, I'm backing up, I know, but transcription is causing this to elongate a long strand of mRNA that's just flying out of here. Now I'm running this video kind of fast, but it'll still work. These are our RNA nucleotides that are being recycled, and they are being made into our long mRNA strand. Now this video doesn't show um, the rest of the process here, but this one does. So this is where we kind of left off, and that mRNA now is floating and it's going to leave the nucleus. So it heads out of the nucleus, as you can see there, it's going to leave the nucleus. And now we're going to do our translation piece. So what we need to do here, and I'm going to skip ahead to a little spot here that they show a little bit better. There we go. Um, that's the large subunit of the ribosome. 
or that might be the small one. That's the small one, I believe. And there's the large one. And what they're going to do here is that ribosome is going to feed that through three letters at a time. So they're going to show you here's tRNA. And that tRNA, each tRNA molecule has a little red, like a little dot on it. That little red dot is an amino acid. They're each specific to each tRNA molecule. Okay. So they're just floating around out there waiting for their opportunity to get into this process. And now we see a cutaway of this. And we see that there is indeed an arrival site where the new ones show up over here. And then a processing site where the amino acids are grown into a chain. And then an ejection site. And notice that these tRNAs are leaving without their amino acid on the end, without the little red dot on the end. They're naked. They're going to leave. Okay, so that's the ejection site over there. All right, so I'm going to go back and play this. And again, they'll show this in a little bit more detail here in a second. <clears throat> Remember that's feeding through three letters at a time, called a codon, right? And those codons are complemented by tRNA anticodons. All right, so we'll get another little close look at this, and it slows it down just a second here as I wait. Now, as I wait here, just to recognize coming out of the top of the ribosome then is a growing strand of amino acids. And those amino acids start to fold on themselves and that creates that protein. And if you remember, the protein's uh, shape determines its function, right? So there's the A and the P and the E site that they're trying to highlight now, okay? And each tRNA is delivering its own specific amino acid to the party here. So there we go. I'm trying to get along here to where they go a little bit. Yep, there we go. <clears throat> so this can go on for many, many thousands of nucleic acids. Uh, mRNA is usually not very short. It's usually quite a few hundred to thousands of uh, letters long. And so you see the ribosome just kind of moving along the whole thing. Now, what this video doesn't show is that what happens to the mRNA that's used, it's already been utilized. Another ribosome may just hop on board and just make another protein, the same protein again, out of this thing. So you may have multiple sites of this happening all at once. Or it could be um, that these things just dissolve and disintegrate. And then they go back inside the nucleus and they're used in transcription. Okay. So that's our quick little video as that growing strand just keeps getting created. And I think you get the idea. All right. Moving back to here. The codon charts are typically in mRNA, so we have to be aware of that. Um, if you are given an mRNA sequence of something like this, what you have to do is break it into codons, and then you use your chart. Your chart is either going to be in a big circle, or it's going to be in a square kind of like this, but they're all the same. You start with the first letter on the inside, and then the second letter, and then the third letter. Or with the chart here, you start with the first letter here, second letter here, and third letter there. You always use mRNA, mRNA. So get stuff into mRNA, and then you'll be fine. So AUG, what does AUG give us? Well, if we're going to use the box here, A is our first letter, U is our second letter, and G is our third letter. So we'll go AUG, and it's going to give us a sequence for methionine. So methionine is our first amino acids. So we would write down MET. Okay. And then the next one would be CCC. So using this box one, we'll use the box one, C, C, and C, and that would be proline. Now, if we wanted to use the circle, it's the same exact thing, GAG. -G, so we start in the middle, G, and then A, and then G. That'd be glutamine. And you just usually write the first couple of letters, the first three letters. And then ACT, what is ACT? A, C, T. Oh, I'm sorry. I did the wrong thing there. I put ACT in here. I can tell that I screwed this up. Uh, that should be uh, our mRNA would be U, G, A here. Sorry. U, G, A. Well, what does U, G, A give us? U, G, A says stop. So there's our terminal sequence, our termination sequence, okay? All right, I'm going to leave it there with this video, and then we'll come back for one last overview, and hopefully that is making sense to this point. And the short video at the end here will tie it all together.